High Adventure. Tonight, Ron Evans takes us to early Peru in his gripping story entitled, The City of Gold. By the early part of the 16th century, the Spanish conquistadores had pillaged the new land of Peru of most of its valuables, particularly gold and silver. Yet, stories persisted of a great city built of gold, hidden somewhere in the high Andes mountains. The conquerors, having wiped out most of the lowland native Inca population by disease and genocidal wars, were now looking towards the lands beyond the mountains to fulfill Spain's constant demands for more of these precious metals. Don Manuel Gaspo was a man charged by his mother country to see that the bellies of the great treasure galleons waiting on the eastern side of Panama would always be filled. He was an impatient and ruthless man who'd brought war, fear and misery to the people of peace. A people who hadn't the means to fight back. Or at least, so it seemed. Respect, Don Manuel. I do not think a show of anger will solve the immediate problem. It expresses the way I feel, Santosh. I'm surrounded by idiots. Could not even earn enough by their own endeavors to buy a loaf of bread in Spain. Madre de mio, I should send some of them back to Star. Do you include me, Your Excellency? No, Santosh. I cannot really blame you. But tell me, where do I get more gold and silver, hmm? Huh? Already we've gone as far as confiscating jewelry from about the necks and arms of the Incas. What else can be done? The three small mines we have. They are working to capacity, with great loss of life to the miners. Huh, not that they matter so much. Labor is cheap, plentiful. I recommend an expedition into the mountains to find this city of gold, this fabled El Dorado. That is what I have in mind. I can spare 300 men, and you can make your own arrangements for native porters. I would like to travel light. No porters, just our 300 Spanish infantrymen. The city is certain to be populated, and that will mean a lot of killing to be done. The porters could turn against us in such an event and reinforce the enemy. You could start tomorrow, the next day. Time is important, Santosh. Which is why I delay. The mountains are vast, with deep valleys and high peaks. An army could get lost for years without crossing its own path once. Uh, First you recommend action, then tell me why you cannot take it. Now make up your mind. The expedition must proceed, Don Manuel. But first we need one or two guides. Among the Incas who come down from the foothills to trade, there must be some who know the city. Live in it for that matter. I tortured thousands to death to find the answer, yet never once did I get the truth. But you know all this... (laughs) Why do you propose to do what I have already tried and failed? I have been watching the markets, Don Manuel. There has been little killing the past two years, and the Incas are losing their caution, like mice when the lantern is turned down. Mm. I have seen men from across the plain in the market, their arms and necks adorned with silver. Not very many, but enough to convince me that they are from outside our jurisdiction. These could well be men from El Dorado, Don Manuel. Ah, You think they could be followed? No, Your Excellency. They could lose us in territory with which we are unfamiliar. I could take one or two and question them. They have a very high resistance to most forms of torture. But try it, Santos. No stone must be left unturned to fill the galleons. Muy bien, Don Manuel. I will send my men out to watch the markets. For many days, the spies of Don Luis Santos kept watch on the small village markets. They swooped on two tall men with the high cheekbones and pointed noses 
so common to the Inca aristocracy. These were stripped of their clothing and finely worked silver jewelry and brought naked before their inquisitor. Your name? I am Amal, my lord. Do you know why you and your companion have been brought before me? I do not. We have done no harm. That is true, so far. But you will do a lot of harm if you do not truthfully answer my questions. Your companion, who was brought before me first, did not. He is now suffering great agony for his deceit and lies. Suranda is a noble and honest man. It is not in his character to lie and deceive. Yet he did. And for that he must suffer. You will, of course, tell me the truth. If it is the truth you want, my lord, I will tell it. What do you wish to ask? Ah. You will tell me how I can find my way to the city of gold, the place we call El Dorado. I cannot answer. To my knowledge, there is no such city. I see. Your companion gave me a similar reply. So you are also a liar. I would be a liar if I were to tell you that there is such a place. I'm going to ask you for the last time. Where is El Dorado? In the Spanish imagination, my lord. Gods, hand him over to Cabral. The hot irons and the rack will tear the truth from his body. I am getting weary of this, my amigo. If Cabral tightens the rack much more, your bones will splinter and pop out of their sockets. What has happened to... to... Your companion? Ah, he died from lies. As you will also die, Amal. And you will have to kill me, my lord. Because there is nothing left for me to tell you but lies. All right. All right. You are a brave man and have proved it. It is a shame to see a courageous man die for nothing. But you will unless you cooperate. Him. There is a choice, Samar. Cooperate and I can make you a wealthy leader of your people. Or you can die in this Inquisition chamber like, like an English heretic. The promise is tempting, my lord. I wish I had a chance to accept. I also wish there was an El Dorado. Come on, another notch. No, no, stop. stop. He must not die yet. There is a better way, a slower way. Come on, heat up the irons. Very good, Don Tonto. They will make no difference. We shall see, my amigo. I will not let your suicidal stubbornness stand in the way of a lifetime's dream. Believe me, I shall march through this golden city of yours whether you live like a king or die here like a misshapen rat. Save yourself, Amal, while there is still time. You must pray for forgiveness for daring to torment a man whose only crime is to tell you the truth. Ah, are those irons hot yet? Bring one. I want to make pretty patterns on his stinking flesh. Who are you? Why have you begged for an audience with me? My name is Quarrow Lord. I have come as an emissary of my leader who wishes me to lead you to the place you seek. What's that? No, no. No, no. Wait a moment. Guards! You leave us! Now, what place do you talk of? In my language, it is called Secato, but you know it as El Dorado. El Dorado. You have sought it for many years. I know, Don Gaspo. Uh, that is true, and many hundreds of your people have died to keep this secret. Why do you bring it to me now, huh? You have taken my leader's oldest son as a prisoner. We wish to preserve his life if it is not already too late. Too late? Why, oh, Mother de Dios, guards, guards! You called, my lord. Of course I called, you idiot. Run to Don Santos. Tell him to bring the two Inca prisons to me. Run, Don Signal. My prince's son is well, I trust. Uh, he has been questioned. Nothing more. 
If he has spoken the truth, he will be quite unharmed. Which of the two men is your leader's son? His name is Amar. The other was merely his friend, a man of minor importance. Amar. <laughs> this city, where is it? The journey cannot be described by word of mouth. It is far across the great mountains. A narrow pass leads to the Valley of Birds, which is where our mother city lies. The other side of the mountains, you say, huh? No, no, not so far. But it will take us two weeks to reach it. <sighs> At last. At the last, El Dorado is within my reach. Is it really as beautiful as I've heard tell, huh? Are the buildings made of gold and silver? Many of the finer buildings have golden roofs, my lord. But the two great temples are entirely constructed from gold blocks. After all this time, I was beginning to believe it was only a legend. <laughs> and you are willing to guide me there just to save the life of one man? Uh, there is more. Prince Oklanta wants your promise that his people in the city are not uh, intimidated. That they will be allowed to carry on as they have done in the past. Now, see, see, it will be as he requests. Now, what else? He asks that our temples will not be touched, and the property of the inhabitants will be respected. Uh, see, that depends. On what, my lord? Tell me, where does the gold and silver come from? It is easily obtainable from within the rocks that surround the city. In a week, enough could be mined to provide all your soldiers with armor of gold. There will be no need to take it from my people, as has happened in the past. Ah, see, many bad things have happened in the past. Uh, not any doing of mine. Uh, my own king, he, he makes demands which I must fulfill as best I can. Uh, but if the region about El Dorado is as rich in gold as you say, then I'm sure we can all live very happily together. Ah! You have brought the prisoners. If I might speak to you alone, my lord. Uh, see, if you will excuse me. I'm sorry to bring you out from an audience, Don Gaspar, but there is a problem. What is it, Santos? Where are the prisoners? I fear one is dead. Ah. The one called Amal is close to them. Ah, you don't, you idiot! Who said you could kill them? But the ah, was... No, no, no. This is no time for recrimination. The one called Amal is alive, you say. He must be brought here at once. The message came just in time to prevent Cabral from using the hot irons on him. Ah. He was on the rack, Don Gaspar, and it will be a little time before he can walk properly. Then his limbs must be massaged. Yes, he must be treated with every respect as befits a prince. The man is important, immensely important. Go, bring him out, looking as well as possible. Yes, see, I shall delay my guest for as long as I can, perhaps one, two hours, no more. Muy bien, Your Excellency. As you wish. And while Prince Amal is being treated, you will arrange for an expedition of 500 men to leave in the morning. So men? I shall lead you on the road to El Dorado, Don Santos. What? Our guide is in my chambers, awaiting the delivery of his prince. El Dorado? At last. Now calm yourself. Just do as I tell you, and do it with haste. Your prince will be here shortly. Ah, good. And what of his companion? He is also well. However... Uh, yes? His companion we hold as a hostage until my return. A guarantee of your good intention. He will be treated well as a man befitting his position. But most certainly. As if he were a prince himself. Now then, can I offer you some Spanish hospitality while you are waiting? have come to stretch me some more, Don Santos, or to carry out your threat to burn the flesh from my bones? You lied very well, Prince Samar. I was almost convinced you knew nothing of El Dorado. What makes you believe I know differently? <laughs> come, my friend. There is no need to hide the truth any longer. A man called Quaro is with Don Gaspo this very moment. Oh, no. He is negotiating for your release in return for guiding us to your city of gold. Quaro? Is he? Your father's emissary, of course. Please, there is no need to continue the pretense. Tomorrow, 
You are leaving for home. So Koro is here, inside the citadel. I keep telling you this. Now then, I have made arrangements for two women to come and bathe you. They will massage liniment into your aching joints. Two more will clean your clothes, so that in two hours you will be suitable for presentation to Don Gaspar and your countrymen. And what of Azat? Have you told how you murdered him? <laughs> I fooled you, didn't I? Your friend is alive and unharmed. I told you he was dead, merely to frighten you. Then I would like to see him. Ah, no. That will not be possible. He has uh, been removed from the citadel. Now it is you who is telling lies. Your friend will be held to, uh, to guarantee your good behavior. Would you explain what you mean a little more specifically, please? Very well. If you tell Quaro that you have been ill-treated, then your friend will be killed. You will tell Quaro that you have been merely questioned. Do I make myself clear? You will give me an oath that Azat is alive? I swear it's true. Very well. For his sake, I will remain silent. It will be a long journey, see? See, Don Santos. A very long journey, indeed. Deceived as to the fate of his friend, the Inca, Amal, kept his word by saying nothing of his own suffering when he was able to talk to Quaro in his own tongue. For his part, Quaro had many things to tell Amal. They were of a planned event that would have cost the hostage's life anyway. It was midday when the expedition set out from the small coastal settlement. It took three days of slow marching to reach the foothills of the Andes, a region so far unknown to the Spanish conquistadores. On the fifth day, they entered a pass where cliffs towered on either side. We seem to be heading deeper into the mountains. We have many more days marching yet, Don Gaspar. The mountains are very wide, and we must go by way of the passes such as this. Uh, my men are beginning to tire. I will call an early halt. Join me after the evening meal, both of you. Do you think he suspects trickery? No. Spanish greed for gold makes them blind to all else. I think it is time you told me of what lies ahead, Coro. I have thought it over and decided to keep you in ignorance until the last moment. But why? You could too easily and unwittingly give it away. No, you will see in time. I cannot see how we can overwhelm such a strong force. We are few with no arms. It will be done. A desperate but cunning people can overcome their numbers and superior weapons. The Spaniards are also clever. But here in the mountains, they are strangers. To us, the mountains are full. Mm. You are very thoughtful, Santos. Huh? <coughs> With all the respect, Your Excellency, I feel that you are putting too much trust into these two Incas. We could be marching into a trap. Ah, so that is it, huh? <laughs> ah, we are too heavily armed for these Incas to attack with their weapons. No, Santos. You worry without a cause. Perhaps. Assuming we find the city, what then? Our guides will be killed. The city will be stormed and its inhabitants put to the sword, totally exterminated. Ah, we then carry all the gold we can back to the coast. You will lead a second expedition to El Dorado with 2,000 slave laborers to operate the mines. It is all clear, quite simple. Why not enslave the Incas and make them continue working the mines? No, Don Santos, no. They are a most intelligent race and for that reason they make troublesome slaves. The Indios are better. The Inca race must be totally exterminated in the interest of our own occupation of this land. Something else makes me suspicious about our guides. Mm -hmm. If their city is so far away, how did they know so quickly of the arrests? <laughs> My dear friend, you do not know these Incas as I do. Have you not seen the way they can pass messages over great distances, huh? It is done with smoke, puffs of dark smoke, and the signal passed from one hilltop to the next. The man, Quaro, must have already been in the village outside the citadel when Amal and his companion were arrested. I see. As I said, these Incas are intelligent. 
And for that reason, they must be put to the sword. For several more days, the long column was led by the two Incas through many narrow mountain passes. On the twelfth day, they emerged from the high walls of a canyon and marched east along the baked mud of a dried river bed. Hills rose on either side, a kilometer apart, and it was here that Quarrel nodded his head in satisfaction. This is the place, Amar. So now you can tell me. No, 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 my friend, not yet. All I ask of you is that you agree with me on every point and follow my actions. Is that clear? Very well. Good. I shall call a halt very soon, and we will go back and speak to Don Gaspar. Why have we stopped? Your Excellency, we are at the place where I must make a signal to my people. Some of our men are watching from far away, over there in the highest hills. Why do you need to send a message? To let them know that Prince Amal is safe. They will signal ahead to prepare a welcome in the city for you. It smells of treachery to me, Don Gasco. Mm. What if Amal was not with us and I had forced you to lead us here, huh? Then you would have found the city to be very strongly defended, Your Excellency. I see. Hmm. Very well. Make your signal. I must make it from that hill over there on our left. Go then. Your prince remains here as a guarantee of your good faith. No, he will have to accompany me. Remember, we are being watched, and they will want to see that he is truly safe. It is a ploy so that they can run away and leave us here, lost. No, Santosh. They could have run away many days ago. Very well. Go, make your signal. But you take two of my soldiers with you. As you wish. They can help to carry the kindling wood. Accompanied by two soldiers, the two Incas climbed their way to the top of a high hill. They could see far ahead along the length of the valley and dried up river bed. Below them, almost a kilometer away, they could see the long column of men and horses, now stood down, taking a rest. The fire was lit, and soon clouds of dark smoke rose high into the still air. Quaro spoke to Amal in the tongue of the Incas. Soon now, when the deluge comes, pick up one of these sticks and hit the soldiers when their attention is diverted. Deluge? I do not understand. I think, Amal. Have you ever known this river to dry up so? Well, no, but I... It has been damned. Every man, woman, and child has been working to have it ready in time. And now the waters will be freed. I... I can hear it. I know. I see it. Be ready to watch the soldiers. Look! Look, there it is! Now! Now, strike them down! Get them! As the soldiers fell... So did the column in the valley see the gigantic wall of water racing down towards them. Some stood their ground in petrified horror, while others tried to run for safety. But all were swept up as though by a giant hand and pulped by the raging fury of the water. Amal and Quaro watched exultantly as the wave passed and the water subsided to become once again the river they knew. Then they turned east and walked towards the mountain passes, never to be heard from again by the Spanish conquistadores. High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.